Hey guys, this is Josh Valencia from Good Break Studios. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Good Break Studio. Follow us or like us on Facebook at Good Break Studios. And check us out at www.goodbreakstudios.com. Today we're going to be looking at the Valhalla Vintage Verb. We're going to look at it on an acoustic guitar. It has a bunch of other settings for drums and stuff. But, but for today we're going to be focusing just on the acoustic guitar settings. It's a really great plugin. Uh, the only reason I haven't purchased it, I am using a demo right now that as you see fades after 45 seconds. is because it hasn't come out for AAX 64-bit. And I want to move completely over to Pro Tools 11. As it works a lot better on my machine than Pro Tools 10 does. But let's go ahead and uh, check out what this plugin does. It's your basic reverb. They have a bunch of other plugins at Valhalla. But um, this one is one I'm going to look at today. It's really, really nice. Uh, sounds gorgeous. It looks commonsensical um, for the uh, the interface. It makes sense to have something laid out with knobs instead of with, um, you know, just a hardware emulation that looks like it has sliders up and down. This feels a lot more... Um, ergonomic for a screen and a mouse and a clicker so um, very nice in that aspect um, it has several features that are kind of unique to reverbs you can kind of have well not kind of have they do have different colors you have your 70s 80s which is kind of kind of gnarly and then we jump over to now which is really nice and sleek um, explanations as we go through the knobs are actually popping out on the bottom which is really nice um, companies like fab filter that have these really kind of intrusive bubbles that get in the way but um, this is nice just having them just having them, just having them in the bottom. Um, they also have all their other presets in terms of, uh, you know, whole presets. Um, this should be out of frame because it is out of the plugin. But um, you can take my word for it. There are plenty of presets here to go through. And then if you want to make your own, you could just choose the color, space, and fiddle with damping, shape, um, diffusion, modulation, and EQ. So um, just to give a quick overview about what those do, the EQ is basically your standard high cut, low cut. Uh, that you have on these uh, types of plugins that'll kind of influence the way that the EQ works. Your modulation rate, you have um, actually depending on which color you use, the mod, uh, I guess the base code behind the mod is a different kind of modulation, which is really nice. Um, but you do have the rate at which you're modulating and the depth, um, just like you would for any other chorus or flanger kind of plugin. Um, diffusion, your basic diffusion within the room the reverb is in i'm doing air quotes but you can't see me um within that room it's kind of how the sound diffuses within that room so you can kind of hear it um he does a great job at kind of giving you a more technical in fewer words to explanation as to what that does so i'll let you go in here download it and read it yourself uh the shape of the reverb itself kind of uses a kind of a compressor gate kind of deal to kind of Again, awesome explanations as to what these do. I'm not going to read them, but just kind of give the reverb a nice shape to fit it within a confined space. If you don't want it kind of amorphous blob floating out in the back of your mix. I see things a little visually when I mix, but if you don't want something just kind of big hanging over it, um, this will kind of tame it, shrink it down to what you need. And then there's this damping function, which is actually really cool. Kind of one of the more abstract. You don't really see it all the time in a reverb and the way it's laid out and the explanations make it have... Uh, make it really commonsensical but it's basically you have uh, a frequency that you want to dampen so basically you have here the high the high frequency kind of controls the decay kind of will squish that frequency out of the reverb and have it a little more controlled um, you, you have a high shelf that you can use to damp really nice um, and then you have your bass malt which is kind of the the same thing that that, that this knob is doing but you actually get to pick the frequency and then how much you want to dampen it so you can control how much how the how the bass depending on this frequency over here decays over time so enough of my talking let's get listening one thing to note is that this does come in and out every 45 seconds so we're going to go through a couple presets and uh, give this thing a nice listen so let's go ahead and give that a listen without any reverb
I just kind of let that ring out so you get an idea as to what we're kind of going for here. Um, the random space mode, if we go back to the large hall, uh, again, the same random space mode, it just, they just feel so big and you don't feel like the plugin is trying to kind of manufacture the next step in the reverb because basically what a reverb is doing from what I understand in the coding process is that there's like a bunch of math going on trying to determine how long this should last and bringing it down slowly and algorithms are written to get things to go as smoothly as possible. Um, uh, Valhalla DSP did a great job at kind of getting this to, to go as smoothly and naturally as possible. So if we were to go through some of the presets here, one thing to note is that a lot of the presets are more drum oriented. So again, you have lots of things geared towards drums and getting a sample put into a space, which, which is really, really nice. Um, I like, I like plate reverbs. They have a, a bunch of them. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a fat plate, which is kind of an, an odd uh, choice for plate name. But let's go ahead and give that a listen. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to dial back the mix just so we hear it in context. I don't have this on a bus. I have this straight on the channel. So let's give that a listen. Again, really, really nice, abrupt, um, soft. I really like it. I'm, I'm not. I'm having trouble hearing what exactly is fat about this plate, but um, it's still a good sounding plate. Um, a sanctuary. This should be really cool. Looks like a dark pad. So that was a nice, uh, that was a nice little reverb sound there. It did sound when it was totally juiced. It did round off, round off. It did round off the transients really well, which was really nice to hear. Um, very smooth sounding. And for the price, this this plugin sounds phenomenal. It's about forty nine dollars. Um, don't know what it is around the world in terms of euro, but for something that is to the point, sounds great and has controls that make sense with great explanations if they don't. Um, I really don't know how you could go wrong, so I'm just gonna shut up and go through a couple of presets I think sound pretty cool, so let's go ahead and do that. I think just by looking at those, we, um, and for this last one, this dark vocal room, I did go through the different colors. They are radically different. Um, I hadn't noticed that while I was using it uh, earlier, but I had no idea how different the feel was, the sound. Uh, obviously, the 70 sounds a little more rounder, sounds a little darker, just like the description says, even though I'm reading it to you again. Uh, the 80 sounds a little more modulated. It sounds a little more wobbly. Um, I kind of like that. 
Um, if that's the sound you're going for, definitely the 80s was appropriate and this funky color scheme was appropriate for it. And the now was uber clean, um, very, very smooth, very enjoyable. So the guys at Valhalla DSP did a great job. I really suggest you going out and picking this up if you're on, if you're on another platform that's not Pro Tools 11. And when they do drop AAX 64-bit, that would be sweet. And I'll definitely be picking up and getting this in my arsenal. So uh, from the guys at Good Break Studios, keep on watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.